Hello you all, welcome back to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, what's good? If you are new, hey boo, I'm back with another video. Now, this video is gonna be lengthy, so please be patient. Um, so I'm gonna take y'all through a little process of everything. Um, before you plan a funeral, it's very important that you get your feelings in check. And when I mean, what I mean by that is, you have to, and I'm talking about God, you already know, I'm talking about God. You have to ask God to give you the strength to do this. You have to ask for some type of spiritual guidance, strength. You're going to need all of that in order to plan this funeral for your mother. Now, before you get to the point of planning this funeral, the way you are going to be able to check your feelings and deal with your feelings is you got to come to terms with the fact that she is gone. Because a lot of times when death happens, you go through a long period of denial. You go through denial first. You know, you know the person gone. You know, I'm going to take you through the whole process. You, I don't know what happened to your mother. And let me be first to say, I'm so sorry for your loss. And I'm giving you my deepest consolences. Um, I don't know how you lost your mother. But during this process, you might have got billions and millions of calls. Mainly, if, if she didn't, my mother, before my mother passed away, she fought a really long fight. She was in a coma for about two weeks before she passed on. That lets you know right there, my mother was a fighter. And so I was up at the hospital with my mother a lot. Like I don't, I don't, I lived in a hospital room with my mom. I don't think I ever left her sad. And so the way that you are gonna be able to handle her death, because you gotta handle her death first before you can even get to funeral arrangements. It's a process. Death is a process. And it's a long, slow, pain, emotional process. So pray to God and ask him to give you the strength to deal with all this. So the one way that it's going to help you deal with your mother's death is if something happened to your mother, where whether she died from unnatural causes, um, she was in a car accident, worst case scenario, um, worst case scenario, what happened to me with my mother, she was murdered. Um, anything could have happened to your mother. If your mother passed away instantly, I'm so sorry. If your mother was in a hospital before she passed away, this is it is important that you, if you feel like you can handle this mentally and emotionally, you feel like you can do this, Try to go visit your mother as much as possible. When stuff like this happens, it's like your world just pauses. Everything's at a standstill. Nothing is moving. Because it's the only thing you're thinking about is her death. So, if you are, you might take a couple of weeks off of work. Um, do that. Some people like to work. I don't think... That working is the best thing for you to do when you are going through something like this. That's just my opinion. If you feel like working is going to help you get through that so that you're not able to think about it as much, you know, being productive, then I'm not going to tell you not to do it. But I would take some time off because this time you're going to be spending as much time with your mother as possible. You might have got a call from the doctor telling you about her, uh, her state. He, the doctor is going to let you know. What is your chance? What is, what are the chances of your mother living? It's gonna be a scale. You know how you go to the doctor and they say, "What is the pain from one to 10? Life and death. It's gonna be a scale that the doctor gonna give you, and he's gonna let you know where your mother falls on this on that scale. And this is this video. I'm I'm speaking mainly about mothers, but insert this with whoever you lost in your life. You be your father, your best friend, your sister, your brother, whoever. Insert it. I'm not just 
helping people deal with the loss of a mother. This is to deal with the loss of anyone. So you are going to be getting a lot of calls from, from the doctor. If, if it was a situation to where your loved one went to the hospital after a tragic event, then you are going to be getting a lot of calls. And you have to brace yourself mentally and spiritually to receive that. It's going to take a lot of strength from you. That's why I'm making this video. It's extremely important that you listen to everything that I say. And if you have to go write down some notes, do that. Because, like I said, we are living in a time now where you are not promised tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to lose your mama today or tomorrow or next week. So I want to prepare you for when that time comes. So, when you are getting all these doctor calls, keep praying for the strength. You're going to be very emotional. <sighs> wow. The reason why I say you want to ask for strength is because it's those instances where you know how you get up and you, you, you hear somebody speak about they love when they passed away. And what's the first thing they say? Oh, I wish I had seen her for that last time. Or um, I didn't get a chance to see her to say my final goodbyes and stuff. Take this opportunity to spend as much time with your loved one as possible. If you have children or if you have a busy life, whether you have businesses, a husband, a wife, kids, whoever, ask a trusted person if they can help you get through this. Meaning, you might have to, you might need someone. If you have children, you might need someone to step in and take on the care of your children while you are going through this grieving process. Because death is, is tough. It is extremely tough. And you don't want to be super emotional. And when you are emotional, your feelings are all over the place. You are hurt. You're angry. You're um, confused. You're going through denial. You can't believe this is happening. And all of that energy is going to pour off into your personal life with other people, meaning your husband, your wife, your kids, everybody. So if you can, ask a trusted person to step in to help you through this process because you are going to need all the help and mental support that you can get. Do that. You know, take care of yourself. This is not gonna be this is not gonna be easy. And that's why I've been saying this video is long over the this is not gonna be an easy process. And so you wanna take all the help that you can get. You wanna take care of yourself while you are going through this grieving process. That's why I always make a lot of videos about self-love. Self-love goes into every aspect of your life, especially when it comes to things like death. We tend to neglect ourselves when we go through something tragic like this. We don't know how to deal. You might, you might, you might not sleep much. You might not eat. Your man, your mental state is, your mental state is all over the place, and it's gonna be extremely tough. But you have to pull yourself together in order to get through this because you have to plan a funeral. So you want to brace yourself and prepare yourself for this process that you're gonna have to go to, to do this. So, when you go visit your loved one as much as possible, whenever they are having visiting hours, go go visit your loved one, talk to your loved one. When, when I went to go visit my mother, I think I spent the night with her one time. Um, I was going to visit my mother every day. Um, talk, to, talk to your loved one. Whatever it was that your loved one loved to do the most, go do that with them. Um, what you, everybody got a favorite song that they like. You know, um, when my mother was in the hospital, I played a lot of Michael Jackson for her. I played Butterflies. I played um, Heaven Can't Wait. I played, um, I, I didn't play Dirty Diana. That was one of her favorite songs, but I feel like that would have just been too much because you gotta, be, you gotta be mindful too with what you do, like as far as music and stuff, because when a person is in a coma, they, they, have, they need a lot of um, mental and physical therapy to get back to their normal state. If it is a situation between life and death and they have a stronger chance of living, their um, mental strength and all of that is gonna play a huge part in their recovery. So they their favorite song could have been um, Young Buck or Jeezy or something. Their favorite song could have been something where the music is just, <clears throat> where the music is just too heavy. You know how I said in other videos, music, it's important. Music is therapy for the mind, soul, and spirit. So if your loved one like a certain artist and they they lyrics is just a little bit too much, if I'm not gonna tell you what to do, do whatever you want, whatever. If this was their favorite song, that's what they love. But 
if you if you haven't been to the hospital before with a loved one and they are in a coma, they will play a lot of um music. It's mental therapy to get their man back right. You know, they might not be um they might they may be coherent. They might be able to hear you, but they can't speak to you because of the circumstances, their condition. So you don't want to play none of this too heavy, you know, too loud. Too, because it can do something to their mental state. It can do something to their man. You know? So, if you ever noticed, if you ever went to a hospital and visit your loved one and they were in a coma, they play a lot of therapeutic music. They play zen music. They play relaxing music. That's why I said in the last video, spiritual text music is very important. So, it's good for the man. So, they play that music for a reason. So, try to, when you go visit your loved one, play something soft, relaxing, Something that's just gonna make them think, you know. And um, I was heavily into poetry at the time. I had lost my mother, so I wrote a I wrote a poem on her. Um, you know how in every hospital room they have a board that the doctors and nurses come in and write certain notes and medications and certain things that the patient may need. And so you, I, I used that as an opportunity. So um, I wrote a poem on the board, and I ended up I I, I didn't know I didn't know. And I'm gonna get to that. I didn't know that my mother was going to pass away. I thought she had a higher chance of living. So, that poem was what I had ended up using um, on her obituary for her eulogy. And so, um, another thing. With the doctors and nurses, um, all this spirituality, I make these spirituality videos for a reason. All of this goes into coping with the loss of your loved one. Um, Get to know the doctors and the nurses. Don't be one of those. Don't be one of those um, patients because I worked in a hospital before, and I've seen death so many times. Not just in my family, just period. And a lot of times when someone is on their deathbed, basically, because nine times out of ten, that's what the scenario is. Um, a lot of times there won't be a lot of visitors. And that's completely understandable because nobody wants to see a loved one in the hospital. That's like the most vulnerable state to see a loved one suffering. You don't want to see that. So a lot of times they won't be a lot of visitors. And a lot of times they will because a lot of people have the mental uh, strength to come and visit every day. So you want to ask the Lord for strength to be able to do that. So get to know the doctors and the nurses to develop the best relationship you can with them. Because, like I said, if you hadn't watched my video about um my mother's murder, that was in the beginning part of when I first started my channel. And so you will want to go watch that to relate to what I'm about to say. But when it comes to things like this, like if, you're, if your loved one was murdered, again, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, baby. I know that is extremely tough. Um, just that alone is a lot to handle. You got to deal with the murder and then you got to deal with the process after that, the aftermath. I want you to take care of yourself. I want you to be able to do this. I don't want you to be like, oh man, I can't deal with this. I'm not going to do this. Um, I'm going to just stay home. I can't see her like that. You know, you see how you see a lot of people say, I don't want to see her like that. I want to remember her the way that she was. Like, I don't want to see her suffering and all this and that. And I understand that, baby. I completely understand. And like I said, if you feel like you don't have the strength to do it, please don't do it. I don't want to make you do something that you don't want to do. But I want to pass my strength on to you. So, When you develop, when you feel like you've developed a close relationship with the with the doctors and the nurses, if you are not the um, if you are the power of attorney where you have say so, if anything was to happen to them in their last moments, you get final say so on what to do. Take advantage of that opportunity because that's why I say you need to be there visiting them as much as possible because you want the doctors and nurses to be able to fill you in on everything. Um. Yeah, this is so tough. Like, just reliving those moments of visiting my mother at the hospital was just. But I thank God for giving me the strength to be able to handle that. And I don't think I would have been able to. I didn't, I didn't. I was with my sister when she made most of the funeral arrangements for my mother. But I was young and I didn't have the mental strength to deal with all that. I was 20 years old. So I was there the majority of it. But I wasn't strong. So 
when you, and this is going to be the tough part, y'all. After you have visited your loved one, every day you have to. Before I get to that, I'm going to say, when you are visiting your loved one, of course you want to spend as much time with them as possible. You want to talk to them. Um, you, if it is a situation where the person is in a, a coma, where they can't really do much, you want to speak positive. Pos you want to speak positivity. You want to feed good energy into that room. If you are in a hospital room, you've been in a hospital setting. It's a, it's depressing being in a hospital. Nobody. Who want to be in the hospital? Who want to be there? Nobody, right? So while you are in the hospital with this person, you want to put as much positive energy out to this person because nine times out of ten, you never know. You might be the person to save this person's life. Because they hear everything you're saying. Nine times out of ten, they are co they're they're coherent. They hear you. So you want to talk to this person. You want to pray with this person. If you are a believer in God, pray with this person. Talk to this person. Um, talk about memories you might have with them that you miss. And be like, man, you know, like my sister. Um, when we were in the hospital room visiting our mother before she passed away, my sister spoke positivity. She's like, Mommy, you getting up out of this hospital bed. Like, what is you doing, girl? Like, you getting up. Like, we used to talk to our mother. Our mother, our mother, we didn't have, like, the typical mother-daughter relationship. Our mother was more so our best friend than anything. So we could talk to her like she was one of our girlfriends. Like, girl, you finna get up out of this hospital bed. What is you doing? Like, you a soldier. You a survivor. Like, for real. Like, my mother been through a lot. Like I said, my mother had been through plenty of life and death um, situations. So it wasn't no doubt in my mind that she wasn't going to make it through that bully. So we sitting up here talking to her like, girl, you finna get up out of this and all this and that. And the doctors was telling me that this is this is the important part. Um, they may tell you that your loved one is going to be a vegetable. So what that means is they are, they are going to need a lot of tons of physical therapy. To get back to that normal state. They're not going to be able to do anything. A vegetable is like a baby. You know. So I had already knew. That my mother was going to be a vegetable. And I had already put in my mind. That I was going to take care of her. It wasn't no doubt in my mind. That I wasn't going to do that. I didn't want her to be in the hospital. I wanted her to get well enough to come home. So if the doctors tell you. That your loved one is going to be a vegetable. Try to ask for strength in that moment. Because that's tough to hear something like that. Because you remember your loved one the way that they was full of life. You don't picture them being sick and, you know, once needing to be held pain and foot taken care of like their newborn baby. Because when you go through death, you you go from, you come in this world, how you come in this world is how you leave this world. You come in as, in as a baby. You kind of leave out as a baby. That's why you see these old people, they end up going to nursing homes. They need to be looked at 24-7. Um, um, nurse aid 24-7, around the clock. They need to be cared for, just like a baby would. After the baby is grown born, what do you do? You take them to the nursery. You um, monitor them 24-7. That's the same way with an older person. But this situation to where, you know, tragic event, if you get this type of news, please try to deal with it in the best way possible. Now, after you have gotten all that news, what you want to do is you might need to take notes. You might need to write notes. At this time, I didn't write notes. I didn't do all of that. Um, I'm just telling you based off of what I remember. But in order to, if you are the person that is making all the funeral arrangements, you need to be taking notes and taking into account everything. So... <sighs> If your loved one, that's why I say you gotta ask for you have to ask God for the strength to deal with something like this because you you your loved one might be in a hospital where you feel like they're not getting the best treatment. Um it might be a rude nurse or a doctor where you just feel that energy and it's just off, you know, it's not right. A lot of times, you know, and a lot of people won't say it. When you are working in a hospital, um hospital setting, people die. That ain't nothing new to these doctors and nurses. They see that every day, all day. So they're completely desensitized to the situation. This They don't know this person from a can of paint. This is just a person, a patient of theirs. So they not going to show sympathy or care to your loved one in a way that you would expect. Because like I said before, you are going through this alone. And so 
nobody nobody deals with your situation when when a person is not in the same situation as you they don't really care you know they just there to do their job y'all you are going to come across some doctors and nurses they have a heart to go and they really love what they do they really love their job that's why you see these people these doctors and nurses they've been working at their job for 20 40 plus years this that is because that is their passion that's that is their calling from god to take care of people so hopefully you get a person that cares for your loved one in the best way. So after all of that, you out making you out making other arrangements. You thinking that your loved one might. What are the chances of them coming home? What are the chances of them staying in the hospital? Um, going through all of this, get calls. Back to back to back to back to back to back. My phone. After after my family was murdered, my phone was ringing nonstop. My phone never stopped ringing. And when I said it never stopped, it never stopped. You need the mental strength for all of this. If you feel like it is too overwhelming for you and it's too much, turn your phone off. Turn it completely off. Don't take no calls from nobody. Don't take no text messages. You don't want no visitors, don't have no visitors. Take this time to take care of yourself while you are dealing with this. It is extremely important. You don't want to blow up on nobody just because you're emotional. Because it happened all the time. It happens all the time. So you don't want to take that out on nobody. Because you want to prepare yourself for what's to come because it's not over. And that's what's the hurtful, frustrating part about it all is that it's not over. It's constant. Every day you have to deal with it. It's like, Lord, why is this happening to me? Why did you, why, why, why are you taking my loved one away from me? But you're going to be able to do this and I'm going to help you do it. So we get into the tough part, y'all. I'm inviting the Lord into the room right now to ask him to give me the strength again to talk to y'all. When you get the call, because this is the call that you don't want. This is not the call. This, that, don't nobody want this call. When you get a call from the doctor, take a moment, take a moment. When you get a call from the doctor, nine times out of ten, they are going to tell you that your loved one passed. The way that I feel like it's best to handle this is to compose yourself. That's why I say you need to be praying to God heavily during this whole process because He is going to be giving you strength, this strength to deal with all of this. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have the words to speak all this during this time. I didn't know to pray God to help me through my mother's death, and that's why I was extremely tough on me. So I don't want you to go through the same thing that I once went through. So when you get that call. deal with it you may need to go back up to the hospital they may need to tell you that you need to come back just like they did with my mother the day after I bit the matter of fact I had left that morning because I remember spending the night there with her when I had went home I remember I had a talk with my mother I went home and I kid you not the very next day y'all I had a call from the doctor telling me that I, that we needed to come back up to the hospital. And I knew, I knew then and there that she was gone. Because when I was there, a lot of times, like I said, you be in the period of denial. You believe that your loved one is going to make it in. It's nothing wrong with thinking that. You want to believe the best. You want to speak positively. You want affirmations. You want answers. From the Lord and everybody else. Doctors and nurses might get tired of you, but that's your love, man. You deserve to know everything there is to know about them from start to finish. So the nurse had kept telling me that my mom, my mother was extremely sick because I kept asking her, Oh, is my mom dead? Is she gonna live? Like what's what's wrong? You know, how's her progress? And I was young, so I didn't have the or the words to to even say, to even I didn't I didn't know how to deal with none of that child. And so the nurse was just kept telling me she was extremely sick. I knew that this nurse didn't want to give me false hope. I felt like this nurse knew that my mother was going to pass away. 
when you are working in the hospital field, you're going to be, if you ever worked in the hospital field and you have lost your loved one, you know how it is. If you're on the other side of the fence and you've been in the hospital and you know how it is with death, you know when a person is dying. You know that. So she didn't want to give me that. She couldn't give me that because that would have been against her, the hospital policy. That would have been, she probably would have gotten in trouble for that. But she kept telling me she was extremely sick. So if you hear that your loved one is very sick from, um, your, you know, the nurses, just brace yourself. Not saying that, you know, they're going to pass away, but just brace yourself because that might be the case. Um. After you get the call and you go up to the hospital, nine times out of ten, the doctor, because they're not going to tell you over the phone. They're not going to tell you anything. They're going to want you to come up to the hospital. Brace yourself for that. When you go meet with the doctors and they tell you that your love one passed, please ask God for the strength to give you the strength in that moment to deal with it because that is extremely tough to hear. That is the worst thing to hear in the world. The worst thing. The worst pain. I remember how painful it was. Like, you know how somebody knock you out or somebody push you super hard and it's like you feel like the, the wind being knocked out of your body. Like, it's it's the feelings of, it's feelings undescribable. It's every negative feeling that you can ever feel. That is what you are going to feel when you hear that your loved one has passed on. Some people deal with that differently. They might not deal with it at all. They might just be like, okay. You know, and some people are very des desensitized to stuff like this. Um, I feel like in a way I am des desensitized because I've seen death so much to where I know how to deal with it. So if somebody was to pass away, I would hurt, but I would have strength enough to get through it. Um, after that whole ordeal, they're going to give you your last moments with your loved one. If it got to a point where they um, decided that they were going to, the person, your loved one was on life support, and they decided they wanted to pull the plug, or if you were, had last say so, you were the power of attorney, you had say so over their last moments, then you already know, you know? So you are letting family members and friends come visit. Um, you are filling them in on this person's um, state. In certain preparations you need to take going forward you want to do that and try not to do it all by yourself have you gonna you're gonna have that mental support you're gonna have somebody by your side that's gonna help you through this don't try to do everything don't overwhelm yourself don't just like i said the lord ain't gonna put too much on you that you can't bear so he's not gonna put too much on your belt because he knows that this is gonna be tough for you and he's gonna help you through this so that's why you need to talk to him you need to talk to him first before anybody. Friends, family, whoever, boyfriend, children, whoever. You want to talk to that man upstairs first. And so once you get all this bad news, you are going to have to make calls to certain family members to let them know of your loved one's passing. You are going to need that mental strength to deal with the emotions that's going to come from those calls that you get. Because like I said, your phone will ring constantly. So now it's to the point where you have to talk to someone. So after all of that, when you feel like you, when you feel like you gain enough courage to get on the phone and talk to people. When you have your last moments with your loved one. Do that. Sit there and talk to him for as long as possible. I think it's a time limit to where you can be in a room with the loved one before they, you know, take them away. Um, whatever your loved one's wishes was. So I say it's important to um when it comes to your mother. Why well, I say in other videos, if you don't have a great relationship with your mother, you better try to have one. You better build the best relationship you can with your mother. I understand we don't all get the nurturing mother. If you did not have the best relationship with your mother, this is the perfect time to try to make amends with her and make things right. After you have learned of her passing or up to the final moments of her passing. 
I repeated in another in another a previous video, and I'm gonna keep repeating. If your mother, if you did not have the best relationship with your mother, you have to ask God for the strength to forgive your mother for whatever she did to you. Because you are going to need that strength to deal with that pain when you lose your mother. Because you only get one. So forgive her. It might come to the moment where she died. Don't sit up there and harbor no negative feelings and no ill will feelings towards your mother. Or whoever your loved one was. Sometimes you got to learn how to let things go. They already suffering enough. You want to bring nothing but positive energy during these moments. Of your last moments with them. It is very important that you make things right with them. Because if you don't, it's going to hit you so hard. If you know, then you know. You have felt the worst pain. When you know you didn't make things right with somebody and you found out that they passed away, that hits you like a ton of bricks. Like, that is the worst pain in the world. I would not wish that pain on nobody. That's like, that's eat you up from the inside eternally. Letting this person pass away and you know that you didn't make things right with them before you left. Y'all was on bad terms. Y'all didn't speak. That is going to eat you alive. That's why you need to learn how to forgive someone. It don't matter how wrong, how you feel like they wronged you. It's, even on social media, I see it a lot. People don't know how to don't know how to let go. They don't know how to um, make amends with people. They like to harbor grudges and negative emotions. That's not going to help you, baby. That's not going to help you. It's not going to help you heal, and it's not going to help you through the process. How are you going to plan your mother's funeral if you sit up here angry? How are you going to plan your mother's funeral when you haven't forgave her? Or your father, whoever. It might be the worst case scenario, and you don't even got to get in the comments and tell me what they did. You might be angry and be like, girl, you did. Like, this person did this and that to me when I was a child, and all this and that, and I never got over it, and I really don't care, you know, don't. This is not the time to be harboring all negative emotions with your love during this time. So, once you have forgiven your mother or whoever you lost, you want to start the process of planning their funeral. Because everything is going to happen so quick. Like That's why I say you got to ask God for the strength because everything is going to be happening so fast. It's going to be slow. It's going to be a slow pain, but then it's going to be extremely quick. Like The world ain't stopping because you lost your love. And I hate to be kind of real and raw like that because, I mean, I'm sympathetic of your feelings of your loved one. But everybody else, the life, the world is still moving. So you have to do everything in a timely fashion. So when you are planning a funeral, you have to do everything in a timely manner. Um, going to the morgue to identify your body. Just the whole ordeal period of knowing that you're going to have to plan your funeral. Get yourself ready for that. You have to pick out a funeral home. And this is where the important part is going to come in. At. You have to be very mindful of who you do your business with when it comes to planning a funeral. It's, this is extremely important. Extremely important. Like I said, your emotions are all over the place and make you a dangerous person. I said that in Another part of my video where I spoke about my thesis feelings. Your mind, your your mind has to be in the right place in order to handle this. So you want to be consistently, consistently praying to God. And I, if I repeat myself, if you, if you, if you be like, oh, girl, you can't repeat yourself. You said that already. I'm saying it for a reason because once this, once this time comes. You're gonna you gonna need to keep you're gonna need that constant you're gonna need that constant repetitiveness. You're gonna need to keep constantly talking to God. Repetitively. It's like I'm sitting up here repeating stuff. Um picking out a funeral. The person that is gonna be handling these funeral arrangements, you have to be mindful of that too. That's why I'm so heavily into spirituality because Spirituality is important. Spirits. When your loved one passes on, 
you are going to be connected. You are going to see the world completely different. If you are a spiritual person like me, you are going to have so many spiritual moments with your love during this whole process and we're here. I had a spiritual moment with my mother, my mother the moment after she passed away. Um, when me and my sister was in the room with her, she was dead. But her spirit was still there in the room with us. And so, if you're not a spiritual person and you feel like, oh, girl, you know, I want spiritual discernment. I want, I want to um, be able to connect with my love with the way you said you connected with your mother. Ask God to give you the spiritual, um, spiritual um, discernment. Ask him to give you the spiritual strength to be able to connect with your loved one and to be able to handle this process when it comes to planning this funeral. And it's important because when you pick out a funeral and you have the funeral di director handle all the arrangements for you, you have to feel like this person is in a good place mentally. You, you don't want just anybody to plan your loved one's funeral. You want to send your loved one off in the best way. So you want to do this the right way. In a way that your loved one would feel that it's well deserved. And you took care of them. You planning out their funeral and making the best arrangements is your way of showing your care to them, your love to them, your dedication to them it's extremely important just think like I said you need, I need, you need to have your emotions in check because you don't want just anybody doing a funeral this, part, this funeral director and a lot of people they they have people planning funerals and the person a lot of times these people don't be doing what they're doing a lot of people, they just take these jobs just because, you know, you have to feel like this person is passionate about their job. Like, they really care about what they're doing. They have a, a strong compassion and sympathy for people. They have people skills. They know how to communicate with people. They're not just doing it because of the money. Or you feel like their attitude and their energy is off. You don't want that person planning your firm because it's going to make you angry and upset. And you are going to dance times out of team and end up doing something that you don't regret. So be very careful about who you have to handle your funeral arrangements, period. The funeral director, the um, when you when it goes to picking out caskets, um, plots, um, all of that stuff. The funeral director, they're going to be helping you plan um, the obituaries, pictures, all of that. That's why I say you have to feel like this person's, person is in a good place. They have to give off positive energy in order for you to let them handle something like this because you are giving this person your loved one. You are placing their dead bodies in their hands and you are telling them, do what you want with it. So you want them to handle your loved one in the best way. So it's extremely important that you be careful about who you have to handle this. Because you're not going to be able to do it yourself. Unless you go to school or be be there 24 7 with the funeral director. And you can't do that because you gotta you gotta um you gotta get your family mentally prepared for this. Um you might have to pick out things for the funeral, clothes, makeup, hair, all of this, whatever whatever type of person that your loved one was. You want to try to bring this person back through spirit. And so you, when you're sending them off in the, the best way, you're not going to have time to be at the funeral home 24-7. You have so many other things to do. So be mindful about who you pick for the funeral. You have to feel spiritually connected to this person. You have to feel like this person is in a good place mentally to do this. So once you got that squared away, you are going to go pick out the casket. You are going to help uh, do the um, obituaries. You are going to get pictures. Um, you are going to decide what you are going to say when you are going to go up to get the eulogy at the funeral. You want to get all that stuff in order. You're going to have loved ones calling you, telling you that they want to speak at the funeral. You want to take down notes of what they're going to say. You might want to bring them with you because you feel like you might not be mentally, you might even have emotional moments. I'm not telling you to be tough as nails. I'm not telling you that not to cry or be emotional. You, you, When you get time to yourself after doing, dealing with all this, because when you're dealing with a death, you're not going to get no time to yourself. It ain't going to be, there's barely going to be any time for you. At all. All of that's going to be. It's you, the doctors, the nurses, the funeral directors, the family members, the person that passed away, they family. If it was a husband or a wife or whoever, you deal with they family. You deal with friends, co-workers, um, schoolmates, um, 
anybody that this person ever encountered in their whole life, you're going to be dealing with all of them. So, it's the only person that's going to get you through all of this. If you feel like you can't handle it right away, and you need to take a break, take your time. Don't don't um do everything so quick. You want you want to do it the best way because if if it's like I said, feelings all over the place. You angry, you hurt, you going off on people. Uh, you cursing out the doctors and the nurses and the, people, the person at the funeral home because you feeling so overwhelmed and you feeling like it's too much. You cursing out family members and friends and stuff and telling them not to call your phone because it's just too much for you. Then turn off your phone like I told you to. You have to turn off your phone. You cannot be consistently taking calls like this when you're dealing with something like this because it's too overwhelming and it's too much. You're dealing with too many energies at once. Your main focus is your loved one. That is your main focus. Look at this person like this is your project. Remember how they give you a project in school and they tell you that you need to deliver it? This I'm not going to say it like that, you know, like a project. But this is your loved one. So you want your main focus to be this person. You might have to desensitize yourself just a little bit to be able to do this the right way. Ain't no right way to do nothing because this is your loved one. You know, you want to, however you feel it, do that. But after you do all of that, did everything that I just said, like I said, everything moved so quick. You sitting up here wishing that you had more time. Like I said, when the funeral, you ever, you ever, been to a funeral, like after the person passed away, you can they funeral next week. Well, sometimes people may stall, they may wait two weeks or a while because it's a certain time limit on when somebody can keep someone's um, body at the morgue with the funeral home. You can't just I'm tired of story where people just leave a person's body at the funeral home, they don't do it. Like, don't, don't, don't send your loved one off like that. Don't do that. Um, whew, yeah, Lord, please give me the strength. Please give me the strength to talk to these people. Please give me the right words to say in the right moment to help them deal with this pain, Lord. I'm asking you. But once this all done, you have went and picked out clothes and stuff for your loved one. Um, all of that. When you are doing that, you have to ask how for the mental strength to even do that because you're picking out an outfit for your loved one that they're going to be buried in. This is, they're gonna, this is what they're going to be wearing when they're laying in a casket. Your last moments with them. And so that's going to be extremely emotional, emotional for you to go to the store knowing that you're going there to pick out clothes for a funeral. So ask God for the strength to do that. You know what your person loves. You, you know they stand. You know the type of hairstyle they like. You know what type of makeup they wear. If they didn't wear makeup at all, it's uh, a low maintenance person. This might be a lot easier for you. Use this hand. And when you are picking out clothes and makeup and hair and everything that you love, well, they liked it. Try to relive positive moments in that moment while you are picking out clothes. Okay? Because clothing is important. It's something that we put on every day. So if you were very close to your loved one, you know what they like to wear. Don't put your loved one in any old thing. You know, send them off in the best way. That if this is what they say, you know that they like wearing um pantsuits and all this and that. And if your loved one was a low maintenance person, they didn't like all that makeup, don't put no makeup on you. Don't do none of that. Just to tell the person, the um the funeral director, um, the person that's um the person that's going to be handling all that, just tell them, you know, I, they didn't like makeup. Don't do that. And if you feel like you have the strength to do it yourself, then do that. And that's tough. Um, I think they have instances where my sister was supposed to do our mother's hair for her funeral, but she didn't have the mental strength to do it. So she didn't do it. Um, you have the option to handle your loved one. So, you want to ask for strength to do that too. Because as you are going through this, getting all this strength, you are going to be gaining. You are going to be doing things that you didn't even imagine yourself doing. Like, man, who thought I was going to be able to sit here and do my mother's nails or my daughter's nails or whoever you lost? Who thought that I was going to be here um, 
put on my father's uh, neck tag that he likes to wear every Sunday at church. He might have been a big kid. Who would have thought that I would have been picking out his favorite watch to put on his arm in a casket? Strength. God. It's the only person that's going to help me do all of this. So, after all of it, after all of this, book, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud that you got to this moment. You are extremely strong, and you are going to be able to do this. So it's going to be getting closer and closer to the time of the funeral. Okay, so you already know what I'm about to say, so I'm not going to say it. If you have never had a spiritual encounter with your loved one after losing him, if you are not a spiritualist, you're probably not going to relate to what I'm saying, or you might, you might relate to what I'm saying. But take as much time as you can to try to connect with your loved one spiritually. It's something about when a person dies that it's something that you need from them spiritually. This is going to help you be at peace with all of this. Once the process is handled and it's almost close call, you want to have a moment with them spiritually. You might have, like I said, pay attention. Um, I had plenty of uh, spiritual encounters with my mother. I had plenty, I had dreams about her. That is another sign that you are having a spiritual encounter with your loved one when you are having dreams. That is their way of connecting to you. They are coming to check on you. So cherish those moments to connect with your loved one because like I said, they are going in the physical sense, baby, but they are still here through spirit. Not here by flesh, but by spirit. Spirit lives on. That's the very, that's the very reason why I'm so glad that God gave me a spiritual gift because I didn't think I, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been able to ha handle my mother's death the way I did if it wasn't for Him giving me a spiritual gift. Early, it's a child. God knows our life; He sees our future before we do. He know, He knows when we all gonna leave. If you don't have a spiritual gift, it's got to give you a spiritual gift if that's what you want. It's very powerful. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Um, when you are dealing with death, it's going to be a lot easier for you to deal with because you are going to feel like you are still connected to them. It's going to be like they never left. So it's a beautiful moment, man. I'm telling y'all, I don't want you to be sad. It, it's, it's a grieving process. Like I said, everybody grieves in their own way. It's not a time limit on grieving. So take all the time you can while you are grieving, but also take care of yourself. And when you are having spiritual moments with your loved one, take advantage of those opportunities. So, yeah, I'm going to cut this video short because I'm going to make a second part um, to the funeral. That's going to be kind of lengthy because there's going to be a lot of emotions to add to this a lot of tears, a lot of pain. So that is not something that I feel like I can put in this video right now. Um, I'm gonna have to, like I said, my mother been gone for 11 years, but some days it feels like yesterday. So I ask God, I ask God, I thank him for giving me the strength to do this video. But sometimes I have to um, stop the video, recharge myself, and be able to come back with a better message next time. So the funeral is going to be a lengthy process. And it might not be lengthy. Depending on where my spirit is and how I'm feeling. And the strength and the words that God gave me to speak to y'all. That's what's going to come out through my video. So stay tuned for the second part to planning your loved one's funeral. Take care of yourself. Your loved one is so proud of you. They miss you. They want you to be strong. They love you, and I will talk to y'all in the next video.